it's so messy but you can see how I'm getting it drained out it's really discolored but this stuff Hey, it's Jason here and I'm with my 2008 Chevrolet Colorado. I bought this in 2012 with about 80,000 miles on it. And what I need to do today is I need to do a coolant flush. Um, it's very hot out, it's about 90 today. And on very hot days, I'm noticing on extensive driving that the, uh, the engine heat, the, uh, it's getting a little higher. It's not overheating but it's running higher than it should. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I have not done a coolant flush on this in the past 100,000 miles. So shame on me. I definitely don't take care of my Chevys the way I probably should, like the Land Rovers. But let's go ahead and I'm gonna walk you through what I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna actually go through and do the process. You're gonna need a few things here. The Colorado takes about 10 quarts of coolant. This is the 5050 Dex Cool pre-diluted so this is for use in gm you don't add water this is one gallon so i got three gallons which is just about enough a little bit more than i need i uh i use my old little filler here so i can put it in and i can control the pour so it doesn't splash everywhere i bought some additional hose clamps because i expect maybe the oem hose clamp on the lower radiator hose might be bad. Five gallons of distilled water. This is how I'm gonna flush it. Um, the manual says do not use um, like, a trend, like a coolant flush chemical. So I'm gonna run distilled water through it. And then of course I have my tray. This is a new one, it was on sale so I bought it. But I have the old one in the back where I can actually have everything drip down on. So you're going to need a drip tray. You're going to need distilled water. Um, you probably don't need hose clamps, but golly, I don't want it to break and then not have a clamp to put back on the lower radiator hose. You're going to need a funnel or some way to get the coolant in easier. I just like to use that little gizmo there. You're going to need the Dex Cool. This is pre-diluted, no water needed. And I definitely would advise, you know, look in your manual and get uh, familiar with everything. So specifically what I mean is just your owner's manual. And you can see it will tell you about checking the, uh, the coolant, how to add it, that you want to use Dex Cool. There's a misconception that Dex Cool is not good. In the early days of Dex Cool, it caused some issues with excessive rust and corrosion. That has all since been resolved. This is running Dex Cool. The Silverado is also running Dex Cool. Never had an issue. 180,000 miles, maybe 190 now. About 290, close to 300,000. When you look in the manual, though, um, just kind of get familiar with like what to use and um, kind of the process of where to check everything. And specifically on page 5-32, it's going to show you where everything is located, like your recovery tank the actual fan and the actual pressure cap. So the recovery tank is this guy. So when your engine is completely cool and, and only do any work when your engine is completely cool, this will hover around the full line, which is right about here. And this recovery tank, um, you're gonna wanna make sure you get emptied out uh, as well, right? So when you look at this, it has this pipe that snakes around Nope, wrong one, sorry. This guy here, it snakes around and it actually goes to the radiator. So um, this is the top of the radiator right here and this is where you can see fluid. That's gonna be at the top. So how much um, coolant do you add? You're gonna add enough coolant that's gonna come up to the neck and then you're gonna also wanna make sure it goes to the full line on the recovery tank. So how, how am I going to do this, right? What's the best process on a 2008 Chevy Colorado to do a coolant flush? So I'm going to do this by first, the radiator does not have a drain plug at the bottom. So you got to actually remove the lower radiator hose and it just shoots out everywhere. So you want to put your drip pan under there to catch everything. 
So looking at the Colorado, go down, and you're gonna wanna get to the lower radiator hose. So let me get down. And it's this guy right here. So you're gonna probably, I'm gonna remove this. It's actually broken back here so I get better access. But this metal clip is where you're gonna pop off, pull the hose down, and it's just gonna flood out. So you're gonna wanna kinda be out of the way and you're gonna wanna have a drip pan here. That's gonna get the coolant to come out of the system. You're gonna end up having to tighten this up, <laughs> drive it with distilled water, drain it again, and tighten it back up and put coolant in. So it's a bit of a repetitive process. Some cars have a drain plug um, by the radiator. I'm pretty certain this does not have a drain plug near the uh, the radiator at the bottom. So you're gonna have to remove this hose and, and let it fall. I bought a replacement clip hose clamp just in case that breaks or something bad was to uh, was to happen. Once that's undone, you're gonna wanna remove the radiator cap and that will just help get any more out that falls down. But you're gonna wanna go to that recovery tank or coolant reservoir and you're gonna wanna take the, um, the hose here and pop this off. And then you're gonna actually wanna take that and you're gonna wanna use that to drain the recovery tank. So I'm gonna take this hose, snake it back, and probably drop it down in here and let all this recovery tank empty. So now in theory, my coolant should be out of the system. It's all emptied. I'm gonna hook these hoses back up. I'm gonna fill this with distilled water up to the neck. I'm gonna fill this up to the four line. I'm gonna keep the cap off. I'm gonna start the vehicle. This is probably gonna drop a little bit more, add a little bit more distilled water. I'm gonna tighten this back on and I'm gonna let the vehicle run for about 20 minutes until it gets to around 2000 RPM. You're gonna crank the heat all the way up, let the heat run. That helps get air out of the system and helps, helps get, get that coolant transfer. After about 20 minutes, I'm gonna drain everything out. It's gonna be that stilled water coming out and I'm gonna um, probably have to see how discolored it is. And if it comes out and it's not clear, that means that there's still stuff in the system and of course it's still um, a little bit, you know, corroded in there. I'm gonna add it up with more distilled water. That's why I bought five gallons. And then with that additional distilled water, I'm gonna do the cycle again, drain it, and I'm hoping on the second drain, the water will be cool. The challenge is, you can only remove this cap and work on it when it's cool. So after I've run that first cycle of distilled water, I'm gonna have to wait a little bit for it to actually cool off. So enough of me talking, I just wanted to show what you need for the job, a visual overview of how I do it, in a few hours, once I pick my son up from school, we're gonna tackle this project. I doubt I'm gonna get it all done today. I'm hoping to get the fluid drained and the first set of distilled water going through and finish it tomorrow once everything's cooled off. Okay, the first step's gonna be to remove this little, um, it's like a plastic skid plate. Mine is already broken in the back. I hit something on the road, but this is a 13 millimeter socket, um, a bolt. So you're gonna wanna use a 13 millimeter socket to loosen up the bolts holding this in. And that's just gonna give you a little cleaner access. And my thought is that will, um, keep the stuff from splashing everywhere when I undo the, uh, the actual tube. So let, I'm gonna need two hands to do this, but just, you know, one, two, three, four bolts holding it on. And in my case, it was 13 millimeters. So once it's off, that's how it's gonna look. Mm -hmm. You can see that is the main lower hose and there's no drain here on the bottom of the radiator like some cars. So you gotta physically pop this off to do it. I'm gonna inspect everything and make sure there's nothing that looks like it's leaking or anything like that. Um, but so far it looks okay. And that's the, uh, the radiator up there. So the next step's gonna be to loosen up that clamp. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm just using these vice grips and you're gonna put 
on the sides of this clamp and squeeze it, it's gonna loosen the clamp up. But as soon as you do that, this is just such a messy job without having a drain plug, I hate it. It's going to just drip stuff everywhere. So I have this catch pan, I got another one next to me, and I'm gonna try to just get this loosened up. And popped off, and then I'm gonna pop the actual I'm gonna pop the actual hose off. I'm just doing the clamp right now. And you can see how it's already starting to come out. So I'm gonna get some paper towels and put here, and then I'm gonna clamp that together to loosen it. So this is the clamp I'm talking about that you squeeze to get that hose off. But coolant just falls right away, so you do your best to catch it, but if they had just had a drain plug here, it would have been so much easier. Like BMWs and some of the other European cars I've worked on have those plugs. So I'm gonna squeeze this. I don't wanna keep my camera too close because I don't want coolant getting on my camera. So you're probably not gonna see me actually do it because it's gonna get a bit messy. All right, so you can see quite a bit is drained out. Man, this stuff looks terrible in color compared to what it, generally look like not sure if you can really see in there too good that's a little better you have the um the radiator cap removed the reservoir here there's still a little bit in there just a little bit but i want to flush that out so what i'm going to do is take this disconnect it and then drain it through the bottom so you basically just take that plug and these are just little plastic clips that you just lift the top up on and it slides out and the clip stays. So you're gonna wanna do that so I can get the hose to drain it through the bottom. So you can see now I have this reservoir um, tube out that hooked to the radiator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna feed it down through the engine bay into a catch basin to drain what's left in the reservoir. So I just ran it through down here and just a little bit is coming out. Okay, so I have everything drained. What I'm gonna do now is rehook up the lower radiator hose. I've already hooked up the reservoir hose over here. Once it's hooked up, I'm going to put distilled water in and then you let the uh, truck get up to up to temperature. Um, some learning so far, I feel like I should have had a much bigger drip tray because when you un undo that hose, it goes everywhere. And uh, I guess that's about it. I'm, I'm curious to see how I get that hose clamp back on. It looks like just squeeze the clamp and then push it on and then release it and it holds it nice and tight so let me give that a go and uh once it's hooked up we can do some distilled water okay i have the hose clamp back on basically you're gonna squeeze that with your vice grips loosens it up and then take your other hand and push that hose up and it goes on nice and tight so now i can go up top and i can do the uh, distilled water so you want to be certain you are using distilled water for this step so this truck holds around 10 quarts of coolant. And I just use this little guy and I can put four quarts in at a time. I like this because it's not as messy because you're pouring it in here then you have a nice spout to put it in. So I'm gonna load up four quarts and I'm gonna go ahead and take, and there's still a little bit left. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and dump that into the radiator. So I'm dumping it all in. You can go pretty quick with this too, which I really uh, do like. All right, so I have it filled with distilled water. I put a little bit too much in there, but I'm gonna start it and I expect this to drop. I have the, um, the back reservoir filled as well there was still a little bit of dex cool in there that evidently i did not get out so i'm gonna have to flush just maybe a little bit more and flushing basically just means 
I'm going to uh, fill it with distilled water, let it get up to operating temperature, drain it, see how clear it is. Put distilled water back in, let it get up to operating temperature and run for about 20 minutes with the heat on high, drain it. And the goal is eventually when you're draining the distilled water out, it, uh, it comes out clear versus discolored. That's how you're kind of flushing it. So let me do the first step here by starting the car. So I have it running with the cap off to try to get any air out that might be in the system and any water or anything that goes down, I'll add a little bit more. But once it gets to operating temperature, I'm gonna wanna crank the heat up and make sure I put those caps back on. So I'm just letting everything run, let it get up to temperature, and then I'm gonna cut the heat on. And you can see, you feel, you know, this is getting nice and hot. So let me hop in the cab and cut the heat on. I can't believe it's like 98 degrees out and I gotta cut the heat on. Well, you can see it's up to operating temperature and uh, I got the heat cranking. And this is to make sure any bubbles get out and it goes through the heat core. It's also a great way for you to enjoy a sauna. On a 95 degree day, it's like your own sauna at home. I just have these sun protectors up. So you know, let this run for about 20 minutes. Keep an eye on the engine temperature. I'll also rev it to get it around 2000 RPM to really get this engine working. Another option is you could take it for a drive. Now, whatever your preference is, you just want to kind of emulate the engine working and getting nice and warm. Don't do what I did initially. Make sure your AC button is off. Heat max. It is blowing. I'm gonna go ahead and change it towards the windows. Max heat. And I'm getting my RPMs up. And I'm just watching the temperature. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes with the heat running. I've kept it around 2,000 RPM for the most part. It's, uh, it's never gotten beyond what you see here for engine temp. But given, you know, it's been a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the procedure. Cut the car off. And it's gonna have to cool down, which means I'm gonna finish this tomorrow morning. I'm gonna go ahead and drain it and see what color it is and repeat this process until it starts coming out clear. Okay, now that everything is cooled, it is the next day. I just didn't have time to finish this with the engine cooling. I'm gonna drain out the distilled water. I'm gonna look at what color it is. I'm gonna refill it with more distilled water and run it again because you're trying to just continuously run that distilled water through to give it a nice clean flush. So it's the same process. I'm gonna disconnect the lower radiator hose. I'm gonna get messy again, but it should not be nearly as much uh, coolant. It should be more distilled water than anything. Be sure to put your gloves on too. I didn't mention that at the beginning, but I do wear um, little black latex gloves just to be uh, certain. I don't get anything on my hands from a coolant perspective. It's not good for your skin. So I have the uh, distilled water draining out. It's definitely more water in color, but you can see there's still coolant coming out. So I'm gonna let this completely drain, and then I will uh, refill it with more distilled water. I wasn't happy with getting all of this out of the reservoir, so I just went ahead and siphoned it out using my little siphon here. You can see you just pump this a few times and uh, it starts the siphon, but it's already empty, so it's not gonna free flow because um, I, I was having a hard time getting all of this emptied. Now it's nice and, uh, and completely emptied, so I don't have to worry about that mixing. Uh, it was pretty clear. A little bit of discoloration though. Okay, with everything hooked back up, I have filled the reservoir up to the um, to the full mark. It's hard to see because it's just clear with distilled water in there. I can put the cap back on. I have the line hooked back up, and I have distilled water in the radiator. I'm going to start it up, keep the heat off, keep this undone so any bubbles can get out and kind of burp itself per se. I'll put the cap on. Once it gets to operating temperature, I'll cut the heat on. And um, I'll probably do a, maybe a drive this go around just to really work it in. 
and then what I'll do is um, drain it again. Okay, so I'm hoping um, I'm going to be able to drain the distilled water out. I drove it. Everything was fine. Um, but this project's taking a lot longer than I had hoped. And mainly because you can't work on it when it's hot. So what have I done? So far I've drained all of the coolant, put distilled water in, let it run for about 30 minutes, kept it around 2000 RPM for most of that time, let it cool the next day, drained it all out. You can see over there, put distilled water back in, drove it this time for about 20 minutes, parked it, it's the next day because I just don't have time for it to cool before I have to do something um, something else. And today I'm going to drain it. You can see the reservoir is all distilled water, the engine's cool. I'm learning a lot here. It makes the project worth it. Um, I feel like I'm probably going to know exactly what's going on more so than a shop. But I think this makes me appreciate the machines that they hook up to suck this out a lot more because what I'm noticing is I'm not getting all of this distilled water and coolant out. In fact, what's in the heat core and the engine block it doesn't seem to want to come out as much. So I'm going to do something a little bit different on this final drain. Um, I'm going to jack it up in the front and the back. Right now I have it up on the back at a slope. So I'm hoping that would let when I disconnect the lower radiator hose more from the engine block come out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute exactly how many gallons I get out. In addition, I know I've put, I've only put about two gallons of distilled water in. So theoretically, um, I should get, I, I had about a gallon of whatever it was left between the heater core and the engine block. So once I do this, I'm going to measure how much comes out, how much I put in. I'm going to drive it a few days and then I'm going to actually measure how much antifreeze or coolant is in the reservoir because it's going to be critical for me to make sure given we get super cold here in baltimore that i haven't diluted it you know i i don't have dil you know distilled water or something in it a lot of folks will just do the radiator i'm trying to get as much out as i can and i know there's a plug on the engine block you can pull um but i haven't researched that too much i've never done that before i've always just did it um, based on the radiator here. So either way, I know this is a productive. I'm just starting to question, am I going to have the proper ratio of dex cool if I don't get all of that distilled water out? So let me go ahead and pop this off. I'm going to keep it jacked like this to get a good drain. Then I'm going to jack it the front up just to get the radiator dumping out a little bit more. And I'm going to measure exactly how much is coming out. So the good news is this, this drain, it's definitely coming out nice and clear. So it appeared to me that we definitely got that radiator nice. Tilting it up like this doesn't seem to have any material impact. You can see it's slowly draining out of that lower radiator hose. So I will just let that continue to drain for a bit to try to get as much out as I can. And I'll also tilt it up. I'll drive it up on ramps. I'll flip the car around and drive it up. So it's moving along. I'm learning a lot. That's what's important, All right? Okay, while I was waiting for this to drain, I did a little bit of math here. I may have been, I may have misspoke at the beginning of this video, but um, I am told this 2008 Chevy Colorado, which has the Vortec 3.7 liter engine, holds around 10 quarts of coolant. So that is roughly two and a half gallons. So that would be two of those and half of another. So I have probably another half in there, which would give me two full gallons that have came out. So that means there's a half gallon potentially in the heat core. You can see there's some what's coming out nice and clear. So I know it's flushed good. So I'm gonna trans, uh, transfer that into this to make sure I have a little over two gallons. I'm gonna drive off the ramp, pop the front up, and I'm going to see how much I get tilting it so the radiator can drain a little bit better because it's, it's tilted forward. I know everybody watching this video is probably like, what about air in the system? This looks a little crazy. I'm going to fill it back up. 
I'm going to keep the cap off, let it burp, and then squeeze the radiator hose and make sure no bubbles are coming out. So let me transfer the truck around to try to drain the rest. Okay, so on a system that holds 10 quarts, I've roughly got eight quarts out of the system. It's not, it's discolored, it was nearly coming out, just watercolor. So I'm gonna hook the lower radiator hose back up, make sure it's secure, and then I'm gonna begin to put the coolant back in. So theoretically, I should put, what, eight quarts back in. I'm probably gonna have to put it in, turn it on, let it run, get the air out, um, and then add a little bit more. All right, so I had the hose back on. I'm getting much better at removing this thing. So you can see it's on nice and secure because that's critical. But evidently they make a tool so you don't have to use vice grips. But I found vice grips fine. I would just use my left hand to squeeze it and then put my hand back here and push it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting coolant in. So I'm gonna start with the radiator using my funnel. When you add the coolant, instead of dumping it, you know, with the handle face and go at the side, it won't splash as much. Or if you go, if you don't hold it like this, you kind of get that like chug, chug, chug when it's coming out. So I'm gonna fill this up. This is one gallon. I put it in, give it a second to drain down. I'm gonna put all the coolant in and then we uh, will tighten all the caps up and we'll start the truck up. Let the heat run, let, uh, let air bubbles bubble out and squeeze the radiator hose. So I started the truck and what I want to do is just watch these bubbles come out and then squeeze this. When we squeeze it, it's going to rise just to try to work any bubbles in the system out because you don't want air in the system. And then I'm going to see um, how far this might drop and add more as I need to. Okay, I'm going to let this get up to operating temperature, cut the heat on, and uh, I'm going to let it run for about 20 minutes, let it cool off, and then I'm just going to check the coolant levels and make sure everything is okay. Like I say, I, uh, I added eight quarts of the um, Dex Cool on roughly around a 10 quart system, so two quarts two quarts to put that in perspective is that much two quarts of residual old coolant and probably distilled water so i'll get a hydrometer and i'll i'll, I'll check my level to make sure my ratio is correct um you know because you don't want to have have the ratio off uh, going into the uh the winter so in any event at the end of the day look i learned a ton doing this project which was awesome i uh i feel like the job was done really really well would i do it again i don't know i might just spend a hundred and some bucks and have a shop do it with a machine because the time of engine cooling and doing it is pretty significant um and I don't like that there's still like two quarts of old stuff in the system. So uh, it's a success though. Look, that's, a, that's all that matters. I, uh, I got it done. I have no issues right now. I'm sorry this video is so long. This is uh, a video for somebody like myself that's not a mechanic, but wants to learn more about their system and do a little DIY project on their car. So again, this is Jason. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your patience. I hope I didn't make you cringe too much, uh, but appreciate it. Give me a subscribe on the YouTube channel. It means a lot. Have a great day.